Hey y'all, welcome back to Movement Link. So let's talk a little bit about scaling runs and why it's so important to scale runs, just like it's so important to scale maybe the number of pull-ups or push-ups we're doing on a workout, or scale the weight you're using with the barbell or dumbbells down to an appropriate level. So let's just go through this scenario, uh, and a lot of us can relate to this, is most people, when they get started trying to work out, they start just by going for a run. It's the simplest thing to do. You don't need any uh, equipment you don't really need actually you probably should have a running coach but at that point in time no one un understands the importance of running technique yet uh, so people just go for runs so they start off by running slowly with poor technique and then as they get fitter and fitter they just add distance and add distance and add distance and you know maybe in the beginning they're doing kind of a walk run and they're trying to get in a mile or two and then they just build distance build distance and build distance but they're building distance on this really slow crappy technique so the issue here is you might cardiovascularly at kind of that low level get better but we're not creating uh, and we're not creating technique and we're not creating training that's actually going to improve our speed. So if you go from a 10 minute mile pace for two miles and then you go 10 minute mile pace for three miles, 10 minute mile, blah, 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 for 12 miles, all you've done is gotten really, really good at running really, really slowly. So what we need to do is boost your running technique and boost your speed. And so then we go on kind of these chunks, just like we do in the gym with the barbell. We start with a weight and we do our exercises. And then as soon as technique breaks down, that's where we sit there. And then that's where we train as we get better at the technique and maybe add reps to it. Then we add weight and then we go through the process again. So in running, we need to do the same thing. We need to be working to get our numbers down under the seven and a half minute mile. So we should be able to run a sub seven and a half minute mile, but to be able to get there, we can't just run slowly, run slowly, run slowly all the time. So a lot of times in workouts, uh, we'll provide the RX, just like we'll provide an RX weight or an RX number of pull-ups in a workout, but we also provide uh, the scaling options depending on where your mile times are. This way, instead of someone who's got a, a slower at the moment mile time, just slogging through a 1200 meter run and getting capped, we can shorten the distance to a distance that they can push the pace more than they'd be able to push the pace here. And then we can develop and then use that foundation of building speed. And then with that speed, trying to go further and further and further. And then at a point we go back and we develop speed and we try and go further and further and further. So this is also why we're not big fans of kind of the classic, oh man, it frustrates the heck out of us, is people start training for a half marathon or a marathon and they find a running coach and the running coach gives them this very generic template. And it usually looks something like run three miles, week one, run four miles, run five miles, run four miles, run five miles, run six miles. And it kind of ladders its way up in there, which on paper, in theory, it sounds like it might make some sense, but it doesn't account for this technique layering and speed development that we need. So what we prefer to do is we build up the miles, but we do it with a mixture of inter interval training and long steady running. So if instead of just running we'll say two miles, if instead we did eight 400 meter runs and we gave you some rest in there, let's say one and a half to three minutes of rest in between each one, now the pace and the speed and the cadence that we can run with on each of these runs, we're still gonna run two miles, can be much higher. Then if the next week we change this down to four to six 800 meter runs, Okay, and then we keep going, keep going, and then we say one, two mile run. And we can do things in between these also, but then we can take the speed and try and use that speed longer, try and use that speed longer, and we can go through cycles like this where we can work on technique and speed and the distance training. And honestly, and this is what we see over and over and over again, which is why we don't need to do a bunch of running, is the type of training we do in here 
Uh, if you ever wear like a, a heart rate monitor through the workout, we're in this low steady state heart rate for the entire hour of the class pretty much. And then we have peaks in there of the really high intensity stuff. So all of the criticism about uh, the high intensity stuff is just too short to develop this long endurance. One, those little chunks of extreme high intensity do have a ton of carryover into the long, slow distance category. But also when you look at the heart rate across a class from warming up and skill work and strength work and high intensity work and cooling down, we've got an hour of hitting these ranges that these runners are doing, but we've got so much more layering of speed, strength, power, flexibility, all of these other things involved in there. So that's why we can run every now and then, as long as our program is making sense and we're layering these extra pieces on it, we can become incredibly good runners without going on these weird running programs. So uh, the reason I bring this up is because running is just one of those areas where people just think it's all about distance and distance. And can I run straight for this distance? And what I would like you to do is have that in mind also, because we want to build that, but I want you to have in mind, how can we improve our speed across distance along with it? And that's going to really help create the good runners that we're trying to create here that are also capable of playing sports, being explosive, lifting heavy things in awkward positions, and really good at bodyweight exercises. Hope this makes sense. Hope this helps. Talk to y'all soon.